Welcome back to Definitely Not Definitive. I'm Ken. And I'm Bethany. And we're just a fantastic couple in love. Loves reacting to some Fallout. Ooh, yeah. End of the world. Yeah. I mean, it's just, uh, it's just fantastic, the end of the world stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, we're checking out some uh, really uh, dark and depressing stuff from Fallout. 10 Fallout vaults you'd never want to live in. Vault Tech makes it sound awesome living in these vaults. And like, you can buy space in these vaults. And they're so great. And they'll protect you from, like, you know, nuclear disaster. Sounds good in theory. But uh, something tells me it's not so great. If you want all of our Fallout reactions, go ahead and check out the description of this video. We got a playlist there for you, as well as a link to uh, our Patreon. We can get early ad-free access to reactions like this. Are you ready? I don't know. <laughs> I guess so. In the Fallout universe, as it became clear that some kind of nuclear war was inevitable, people started crowding into these giant underground shelters known as vaults. For the government and the people living inside them, they were supposed to be a lifeline for the future, mankind's ability mm -hmm. to return to the surface and repopulate and thrive after the radiation in the air finally began to dissipate. The vaults were safe, secure, and never meant to fail, but as fans of the series know, that wasn't quite the case. Oof. What was actually going on was that Vault Tech, the guys who built all the vaults, were using the vaults to test different survival scenarios for the ones actually in charge of the project, a conspiracy of businessmen and government officials known as the Enclave. Of course. Presumably planning on going into space or something like that. So vaults opened early or they were missing necessary supplies or had key systems break early just to see how the vault dwellers inside would respond. Most vaults actually failed miserably and today we're talking about the absolute worst ones in the 10 fallout vaults that made people crazy. Could be people <laughs> inside, could be you, the player, either way there's plenty of craziness going around in this one. And starting off at number 10 it's Fallout New Vegas's Vault 22. Probably one of the most unique vaults in a Fallout game, it's, well, mm. the plant vault. It's a pretty unique site compared to the rest of the Mojave Wasteland, and that's for sure. The actual goal of the vault, however, isn't nearly as sinister as many of the others. It was meant to be a green vault, one that would be sustained by plants. So actually useful survival research for once. <laughs> yeah. Of course, if you look at the state of the place, it's pretty obvious things didn't go exactly to plan. The mad scientist said Big MT donated some spores meant for pest control, but well, plant monsters. The pest control nah. was a little too effective because everyone in the vault was killed by them, leaving the shambling monsters in their place to wander the overgrown halls of what ended up just being another failed vault. It's not exactly madness inducing, but it's <laughs> pretty crazy and unique as far as vaults go. Mm -hmm. Number nine is Fallout 3's Vault 92, probably one of the creepiest and most mysterious vaults in the entire series. This vault contains some of the world's best musicians, and you can even find a recording studio in there. Oh, wow. It doesn't take much investigating to find that, that something cool. went horribly wrong in there as well, though, as mysterious notes referencing a white noise used to plant suggestions in people's head. I mean, you can find them all over the place. Uh. Another log shows someone's mental deterioration. As the days go by, their spelling and grammar just get worse and worse. And when you find the Overseer's Terminal, it becomes clear what was happening in the vault. They were playing a tone all the time that would affect people's behavior in order to see if they could create mind-controlled super soldiers. There's even one log where he admits to planting a suggestion in someone to just go berserk, and it took 20 security guards to take the guy down. Damn! So you could probably see where the things devolve from here. This rage suggestion begins to spread uncontrollably, and the infected fight the uninfected. Some try to escape, some stay. But obviously, when you arrive, there's nothing but skeletons and mire lurks. For being one of the most immersive vaults, with an interesting and creepy mystery surrounding it, this vault definitely belongs on the list. Moving on to number eight good idea Fallout for the musicians. 4, Vault 75, mm -hmm. The Children's Vault. This place, oh located God. below the Malden Middle School, was created to enhance the gene pool <laughs> and create stronger and smarter people using a ruthless method of weeding out the weak. Uh, if you want an idea of just how bad this vault was, keep in mind pretty much the first thing that happened there. The parents were separated from the children, and then all of the parents were executed. Then the remaining security and science staff of the vault put the children through torturous tests, both mental and physical, in preparation for when they would, quote, graduate and be sent out into the wasteland. Of course, the graduation was even more sinister than that. If they were smart enough, they would be brought onto the science team, while anyone they decided was too weak would be killed secretly after their graduation ceremony. 
even some of the strongest students were killed instead of let out in the wasteland there so seven they could harvest and this. study their genetic material. The actual reason the vault collapsed is kind of vague, actually, but knowing how things were going, it's pretty safe to say there was probably some kind of student uprising and everyone left were probably killed. Rating the vaults purely by evil? <laughs> like, this would be pretty high up there. It's, yeah. it's pretty bad. Moving on to number seven, Fallout 3's Vault 108, the Gary Vault. Yeah, you go into a creepy, <laughs> very dark vault where nothing seems to work and there's garbage and junk laying around. It's spooky already. But as you continue, some weird looking vault dweller suddenly attacks you. The only thing he says is... <laughs> Gary! Gary. Yeah, it's a vault filled with Gary clones, and they're mostly all unarmed and are pretty pathetic. It's <laughs> kind of creepy, but weirdly funny at the same time, and the vault gives almost no clues as to why there's so many clones of one guy. The most you find is a holotape in the cloning lab talking about how the clones are hostile to non-clones, and that they're planning on getting rid of some of the clones to make room for other experiments. And obviously that didn't go very well, because it is Gary as far as the eye can see in this place. Huh. It's weird, it's creepy, but it's also completely ridiculous and did get laughs oh. out of me, so basically, yeah, Fallout. <laughs> Gary. That's not as bad as the children one. Fallout New Vegas' Vault 11. There's a bit of a bitter irony about Vault 11 that's both tragic and darkly hilarious. It's maybe the most interesting vault in the entire series, just by story alone. There's no interesting anime or weird twists in the vault, like the drugs you when you enter, or jumps out from you in the shadows. Just a lot of logs to read, and a lot of exploration to do. The first thing that becomes immediately oh, clear is that people in this vault really don't want to be overseer. Then you find out about the yearly elections, where people are elected by the community for overseer, but they only pick people they don't like. As you soon find out, that's because the overseer has to, at the end of their year-long term, be sacrificed in order for the vault to survive. If no one is sacrificed, they're told everyone in the vault will die, different voting blocks begin to form, and people in the vault viciously fight for control over who gets to decide who gets sacrificed. Things start to get really ugly and people start yeah. killing each other and that's the end of the vault. It's but if like you explore the Overseer's show. office, mm -hmm. you'll find one last cruel twist of the knife. You go down the Hall of Sacrifice to see what happens. It leads to a room that instructs you to sit. After some hollow words about living a good life, the walls begin to move to reveal a battery of turrets and robots that'll easily overwhelm you if you continue sitting down. Oh. Fight them oh. off, access the computer, and you'll find out the ironic twist. Nothing would have happened if the vault refused to perform the sacrifice. Instead, a little automated message would play congratulating hmm. them for their commitment to human life. Another happy Fallout ending, eh? That's we good. Win. That's a great twist. People should know what happened. They could learn from it. Mm -hmm. If there's anyone out there at all, I hope they never have to find out. Ready, Harry? No, 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 wait! It's my favorite vault so far. Mm-hmm. And Not that I want to live in. This follow for Far Harbor with Vault 118. This vault, built underneath the Cliff's Edge Hotel, was going to be a pressure cooker where working class families would be stuffed into an unfinished second wing of the vault, while 10 Great. super rich families would occupy the first vault and be tended to by robot servants. Classic vault setup, right? Fully on class lines. The Dirty problem, I guess. That never actually happened. Instead, some specific families bought out the vault, and when it reached a snag securing funding, they used it for their own purposes. What purpose, might you ask? Uh, putting their brains into robots, of course. <laughs> so yeah, this vault is absolutely crazy outside of its intended goal. Instead of being a social experiment, it's filled with completely nuts robo-brain robots <laughs> who all want you to solve a murder mystery. Like oh, a classic fun. parlor murder mystery where everyone's a suspect. That's and, great. Well, let's just say it's completely ridiculous because they're all robots who say stupid stuff. <laughs> Probably the most outwardly humorous vault in the entire series. This is a really amusing twist on the usual vault formula. Well, that's certainly a project in interpretation. Oh, well. At number four, the Fallout That's 1 funny. Los Angeles Test Vault, which is of course not an actual vault, but still one of the creepiest locations in the game. This vault, which you find under the cathedral, is actually a test vault, like I said, built by Vault Tech as a demonstration. But none of that matters. What makes this place so crazy is what's inside. Cult? It's the master's secret base of operations. And he's probably the creepiest bad guy in the entire Ooh. Fallout series, oh let's be frank. 
I mean, look at him. He's a head on a screen with an eyeball hanging out. And the early CGI effects make it more creepy rather mm -hmm. than less. And the whole place is covered in the master's guts. And it becomes more and more of a meat circus the closer you get to the overseer's office. Oh my and God. when you confront him, mm -hmm. it becomes increasingly clear that the master isn't some brilliant mastermind. He's just a completely insane pile of goo. Famously, it's possible to talk the pathetic creature into killing itself instead of following through with its plan to turn everyone into a super mutant. And I mean, when you look and act like this thing, it's probably time to call it quits. <laughs> Join. Die. Join. Die. And number three is Fallout 76's Vault 94. This is a vault that made the players mad, not the <laughs> residents. Because as you know, it's Fallout 76. Which we all know uh, is safe to say had a very rocky start, both technically and in the way the developers have handled the Fallout IP. Going into Fallout 76, we expected there to be a few vaults you could explore, like basically every previous game. So finding out that the only other vault in the game isn't actually like a unique location in a world that you can actually explore, but instead a one to four player raid dungeon that's about getting sweet loot kind of ticked people off. Uh. I mean, one of the only decent parts of Fallout 76 is being able to explore this massive world and read some interesting lore about its history. Vaults are made for that kind of environmental storytelling, but instead of that, we get this goofy multi-step raid dungeon that doesn't really even work well when awkwardly grafted onto what is, frankly, the Gamebryo engine still. We know they've used different names through the years. They're not getting off the hook. It's Gamebryo. <laughs> and here's the thing. There is a story to this vault, but who's going to see it? There's holotapes and notes in here. Unless you play on Novice, you're on a time limit. And you're getting attacked from every single That's angle us. by mm -hmm. constantly respawning enemies. The whole thing just seems like the antithesis to Fallout. Which is probably why with the Wastelanders update, they're completely removing vault raids from the game. Hopefully, this means Fallout 76 will finally get some normal vaults to explore instead of whatever you want to call this nonsense. At number two, it's Fallout Tactics Vault Zero. Fallout Tactics is kind of the black sheep of the Fallout series. Fallout Brotherhood of Steel is kind of the loser burnout of the series. <laughs> Pretty well dismissed as being non-canon by Fallout fans when it was released. It's since been somewhat reevaluated, <laughs> considering some of the less than impressive story turns that later Fallout games from uh, Bethesda have taken. Still, it's definitely the weird one. It's not exactly an RPG. It's a tactical strategy game where you move your soldiers around these massive mission zones, taking on pretty much everything from the Fallout universe. And your commanding officers are Lee Emery, which is always a plus in my book. You never actually encounter a vault in this game until the final mission when you're tasked with shutting down Vault Zero the home base of this crazy army of robots intent on destroying humanity. A bunch of geniuses had their brains connected to a supercomputer called the Calculator and are carrying out the pacification protocol, which was supposed to make the wasteland safer for humans, but instead they're just killing humans because robots, that's sort of what they yeah. do. The whole thing's really 50s sci-fi goofy, but there is a <laughs> final twist. They got R. Lee Emery's brain, too, and you have to fight him. I honestly couldn't make this stuff up if I tried. <laughs> and finally, at number one, Fallout 1's Vault 13. The OG vault, the vault to start them all, the first vault that you see in the very first Fallout game. The problem with this one was simple, a broken water chip, which is where the relatively humble origins of the franchise began. But that's not the reason this vault is on this list. No, there's actually a much crazier reason found within this bizarre Easter egg in Fallout 2. Hmm. Randomly, while exploring the map in Fallout 2, you'll come across these random encounters, where the developers usually like to hide their pop culture references. This one, called the Guardian of Forever, is a weird rock that you can enter into, and doing so sends you back in time to Vault 13, so you can sabotage the water chip. Ever heard of a stable time loop paradox? Well, mm. don't think about it too hard because it will make you crazy. Of course, that's all just a joke. The time traveling rock portal thing is taken directly from the classic Star Trek episode, City on the Edge of Forever. I mean, it literally looks the same and it's <laughs> literally called the Guardian of Forever, which is exactly what they called it in the Star Trek episode. The whole thing is a very elaborate Easter egg, but it's a good, if not really odd one. And again, if you think about it too hard, it will drive you nuts. <laughs> and I'm willing to bet you'd be hard pressed to find Vault crazier than these. If you'd agree and have something to say about any of these vaults or want to put a vault forward yourself, leave us a comment. Let us know what you're thinking. Okay, so uh, <laughs> the last, at least the third one, I didn't really talk too much about the vault. It was just like completely trashing Fallout 76. It's like, no, it's time to rant.
I think the most uh, disturbing vault to me was obviously the like Hunger Games child yeah. vault. Um, I'm surprised that that was so low down on the list because that probably would have been my number one. Agreed. And then what I found most interesting was your favorite, the social experiment one. And it sounds like they took that directly from a psychological experiment whereby there is a subject and an administrator. Mm -hmm. And the administrator is instructed to dole out pain whenever the subject answers a question wrong. And the psychology was, what is our response to authority and how much pain will we inflict on another yep. simply because we're told so by an authority figure? And that this this vault just reminded me so much of that and the fact that um, humans are, are very much predisposed to listen to authority even in those most horrific times when we are being instructed to do things terrible or, or contrary to our morals and values. Well, yeah, I mean, that's how you get like the Nazis. That's how you get like, you know, all these horrible things that happen. It's easy to say now that you would be on the side of good and that you would do the right thing if put in those positions. And some people did. It's not that like everyone, you know, did did, did bad things and, like, you know, uh, and joined in on uh, on things that they, they, they believe weren't right. So, I mean, that's how we got to this point and we got to things that like, you know, that's why there are heroes. That's why there are people that like, you know, stand up to, to tyranny and whatnot. But for a lot of people, they, do, you know, you do go go along with it and you do, you know, because you're either, you know, scared for yourself, you're scared for your family, you know, you just think that like, you don't have a choice otherwise. Uh, and then like for this, like these little tiny experiments, obviously you'd think like, okay, this is like part of the experiment. So I have to do this because if I don't do this, then this is not like, I don't know then they won't get the right data or something like that that they need for this. And so like, you know, but I agree. That was the best uh, vault. Um, the top three, I don't agree with like their, their top three. Like the top three were kind of more just about the game, them, the, each game themselves than they were about the vaults themselves. Um, so I'd be interested to see, there was a lot of vault videos out there as far as like, you know, what the worst ones are, some were longer, some were, uh, you know, this was like a nice little uh, mid range one that we that we picked for this. But let us know down below in the comments. Uh, good channels to check out for this one. Anything else? I mean, the only thing that I was going to add was on to the the conversation about like presentism and Nazis and all this stuff. And, and like, it's so easy for us when we are living in a a comfortable world environment, mm -hmm. uh, not a war torn situation to to say like, oh, what we would do in those sets of situations. Um, but the reality is, you never really know until you're put in those circumstances. Yep. And I was. I was reading a book recently, it was on World War II and the Holocaust, and it's called My Mother's Secret. Really good book. But one of the things that it says at the very end is that our heroics can often be brought out by being put into the most extreme situations that we will not know while we live in comfort. And I think that's that's really true. Until mm -hmm. you're put in a desperate situation, you don't know how you'll respond to it. And it's very easy to judge from our perspective now, um, but, you know, I think it's always important to remember that I think everybody does really the best that they can, which isn't to say that they're always doing right, but, yeah. you know, it's important to reserve judgment. I find the the lore and fallout uh, very fascinating, even though it's like incredibly dark and, uh, and twisty and whatnot, but like the experiments that go on like in, in these vaults, like, you know, that I think that's uh, a cool aspect of the game. Let us know what you thought about this video down below in the comments. And uh, if you want more of our reactions and you want early ad-free access to reactions, check out the description of this video. We got a link to our Patreon and we got a link for some, uh, some more Fallout reactions for our playlist. Yeah. Thanks so much for checking out our reaction for 10 Fallout vaults you'd never want to live in, but just keep in mind. That our reaction is definitely not definitive.